Hello there, and this is Off the Press. Welcome. The program where we dissect the headlines and try to make sense of it. With me this morning, I have two gentlemen in the studio who will help make sense of what we have on the national dailies, and it's uh, Dr. Ido Femi Adegoke, uh, who is a political analyst. Good to have you here again. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And of course, uh, Bernard Oniga, who is a legal practitioner. Good to have you. My pleasure. All right, so we start off this morning with the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed uh, shortly. Uh, it says, Nigeria's unemployment situation frightening. That's according to AFDB, as we already heard in the news. And that's the race on page 23 of the Punch newspaper already displayed there on your screen. And Asu meets Lawan says, IPPIS is a scam. That's on page 8. After Saudi summit, Buhari jets off to UK, according to the presidency, and that's on page 42. Our neighbors must agree to tackle smuggling, according to MFLA there on page 9. Now, the big story for the Punch newspaper is uh, minimum wage negotiations, and Federal Executive Council can't decide for states. That's according to governors on page 2. Labor awaits federal government's template, uh, template once fire me. Wages Commission yet to get directive. And a picture story of scenes of inauguration of Operation NASO by the Nigerian Air Force in Kaduna. That's yesterday. And then we have armed soldiers invade Oshun Police Command headquarters. Another story on insecurity situation of the country on page five. Policeman shoots wife and self dead in Lagos. Find out what happens and it's on page five. Now, Senate rejects minister's appearance, summons Fashola on page 42. Now, 228 inmates flee as flood overruns Kogi prison. We're not sure whether that is good news or bad news, but it's on page 9. And then, man drowns while searching for dredger. That story, again, is on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. And on the final note, uh, well, not on the final note because I can see some stories up there. Police arrest Obaseki's aide, deputy governor, keeps vigil on page 18. And at the very top, really, to your right, uh, worry Kaduna refineries to be repaired in 2020. That story you can find on page 23. Again, Nigerian killed and others injured in South African uh, attack. That one on page 8. Where do we begin? Um, Bernard and Dr. Fermi, what's catching your attention this morning? Well, everything is catching my attention, Good but to um, hear that. firstly, I can summarize all this news to just one statement. Which is? Our problem is holistic, and we need an holistic approach to deal with it. We have a bad governance system. Okay, have you said From that? the unemployment, you can bring it to ASU, saying IPIS. Uh, is a fraud or is a scam, scam. bringing back to Mr. President traveling to UK, UK. for two weeks and then the, our neighbors for our good yeah. collective good no I don't think he said okay. it's a private we'll is a private visit but let me start um, from the news let's start from the Nigerian unemployment okay the, the report yes the major problem is what we call democracy in Nigeria is really not democracy what is it we have a unitary system of government unitary system of government. I'm, I'm happy here I have a legal practitioner who can help me make sense of what I'm saying if I'm not able to explain it. When you have a system that comes from the center and gives handouts to all the states, mm. which is led to unemployment, and that's why you can see the states are saying FEC cannot de decide what they pay. A man who pays you, they How say- the states would interpret it? Yeah, he has to dictate because he's the one who gives him money. They wait, all wait for federal allocation. They, there's an article that says 33 states in Nigeria cannot, cannot survive yeah. without federal allocation. That's correct. And we say we are in federal system. We're a federation. We're not running a federal system. We're running a unitary system. For crying out loud. And we need to begin to move away from what we've been practicing that has not worked for over 50 years. Hmm. So we must begin. To, if it's not working, we have to change it. And move forward and look yes. for some solutions. What are your thoughts, Bernard? Okay, well, I can see majorly on all the papers, the minimum wage um, and the opinion of the governors seem to be very major on the headlines. Mm -hmm. So I will talk about it, and especially in respect to the law. What the federal government is doing, actually, is not fixing wage for the states. 
it is fixing minimum wage. So what the, what the, it is a principle, what the federal government is saying is, in as much as somebody is working for you, and let me also know that these cuts across the states and also the private sector, mm -hmm. it cuts across labor and employment issues in respect to wage and salaries at any scale or any profession or any industry across the nation. So it is the, 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 the federal government or the, or the Federal Executive Council is not fixing wage for the states. It is rather fixing a minimum wage for the Federation of Nigeria. It is saying that in as much as somebody works for you in an institution or in a business, you cannot pay lesser yes, than this, amount. but you can pay above this. Mind you, all of these rants, some governors, I think Anambra State, if I, if I am right, is paying above the minimum wage. Lagos said they will. Lagos also. State said they will pay. Yeah. So what the Federal Executive Council is doing is to fix a minimum wage. It is saying that taking our economic indices into consideration, that a Nigerian should not earn less or below. So it's just actually putting a borderline. That is what it is trying to do. That is important for justice, for equity, and for fairness, and for also trade relations and labor, labor, um, and good, good labor um, relations. You know, so that somebody doesn't just work, take everything home, and you pay peanuts and handouts to people. So mm -hmm. I would address that. I will leave that um, as it were. About the president, no, getting... sorry, Go let ahead. me quickly find out. So, having said that, this is a standard that the federal government is setting. Yes, it but is. But it seems to be there is an undertone that is implying that well, if the federal the federal government has said thirty thousand is the amount, but yes. well, some state may decide to pay lesser. Is that what it implies? No, what it implies is that you, you should less. not and you ought not to pay lesser. Less. You can pay above. So, what the federal government is simply doing is drawing a line. To say in respect of minimum wage, in respect of salaries, you cannot pay below this amount, but you can pay above, above. this amount. And there are states, like I said, who are paying yeah. above this amount, you know? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Now, I want to add to what you said. Okay. The federal government is not head on in this, but what I'm saying, what I said earlier on, is the system that we run has made these states, an average state governor in Nigeria, they don't know how to think. They are not generating any that internal... That's very strong to say. Well, sorry. Um, um, I don't want to hold it back because really, they are with most of them who are complaining that they cannot pay or they don't want to pay. They are most states who are internally gener their internally generated revenue, their IGR is below par. Mm. So they need to begin to look inward to be, and what is, like what he said, the federal government is not saying I'm dictating your wages, but you cannot pay lower than this for a Nigerian mm. to survive in this day and, uh, and age. Okay. But some state governors are complaining because they, they don't know how to go about it. All right. If I would add to what Doctor has been saying about um, the kind of democracy we practice here, you know, we practice a democracy in principle, but in practice, what he's saying is that in practice, in everyday practice, it is a unitary system of government. And especially some of us, and a lot of Nigerians, even the vice president has called for what is called fiscal federalism. Mm -hmm. That is what is missing, you know? So we need fiscal federalism. It is unheard of, it is unknown. Um, federalism is a system is a system of government that goes hand in hand with democracy yeah. because it allows for um, issues such as fiscal federalism, you know? These states are supposed to be buoyant economically. They're supposed to build their economic independently, uh, or rather independent of the center. In fact, it is the states that ought to be making contributions to the center. Abuja should be asking each state for monies every month, mm. rather than the state governors going hand in cap. The kind of democracy we run in Nigeria is in my opinion, a fraud, and the people who suffer most as a result of this fraud. Because why you are in services... <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to cut you short. Not in the problem. interest of time, we Not need to problem. move on to another paper. But Not you can problem. hold your thoughts, and it just might appear Not in another headline. So we go to the Vanguard newspaper now, and it says, Why borders will remain shut? Uh, that's by MFLA on page 8. 90 million Nigerians live in extreme poverty, according to the federal government. And that story is on page 35 of the Vanguard newspaper. Buhari to visit London for two weeks after Saudi Arabia trip on page eight, and three arrested as armed soldiers invade Oshun Police uh, Command Headquarters. Already displayed there on your screen on page 10. 
And currency processing firms must have 3 billion naira capital to operate nationwide, according to CBN on page 19. And then the federal government can't dictate to states a minimum wage. We've talked about that. According to governors, states will pay according to capacity. But anyway, we hope they don't go lower than expected. Now, add federal government um, started deduction of 614 billion naira bailout funds from states' account. Governors looking for trouble. We are ready for them, according to TUC. See the story on page 5. Now, retreat for senior police officers. Uh, there's a story about that. And then 228 inmates escape as flawed submerged Skogi prison. And that's on page six. You may want to find out what that story is about. And policeman shoots wife, self dead after quarrel. And that's on page six. That story was also on the Punch newspaper. Now, insecurity. Uh, Buhari wants police against use of force on page 10. And then um, PDP accuses INEC. And a wreck of colluding with APC on page 12. We're just going to take one story each from here. So, which one is good? Let me start. Yeah, let's talk I, about I the cut, press. I cut off uh, yeah, words yeah. from you. Okay, I'll just wrap up what I was saying. I, I'm saying that the kind of democracy we practice in Nigeria is a fraud, and it's a fraud at the detriment of the people, the common citizens, because um, with all of this brohaha, the president still ends his traveling allowance. You will not hear that the president is being owed traveling allowance now that he is going on a private visit to go and have a nice time in London. You know, so um, the common man who needs all of these amenities and all of this traveling allowance in quote, efficient transport system, you know, uh, we are the ones actually suffering from the bane of the nature of democracy and we practice. So I'll just take um, from the vanguard about the mm -hmm. president um, going, going out of, for two weeks. For two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's okay. He has a right to... To, to take a break. To take a break. It's okay. Um, however, uh, this country is, I'm sorry to say, it seems as if it's becoming a place where we cannot live, unlivable, that's the, for, 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 for want of words. It's becoming unconducive. Every day, Nigeria is becoming absolutely unconducive to living. Should we all jet out? Oh, no, we will not all jet out. We are here. We would fix it. Mr. President can go as much as he likes. We would fix it someday. Mm -hmm. He has only four, four, um, a few more, more years. He would go, and I wish him well in his retirement. But we are here. We would fix this nation. So it's just a matter of time. Um, they shouldn't worry. But what I want to say is that you can see, I would say that Mr. President is also uncomfortable here. He likes to... You know, go to Dubai, go to Russia, go to London. It's okay. Um, I, I wish him all the best. I just hope that his travels um, would materialize into some form of good for people like I and you who still have a robust future in the nation mm. and still I'm, have a I'm lot glad of that here. you're very positive about Oh, I am absolutely positive. Your I thoughts? Am. Well, I like his angle, but I'm going to take it from a different angle. Same story? Yes, yeah, same story. There is not okay for the president to just jet out without telling... Nigerians. Yeah, but we've not. You've heard it. No, it's um, it's um, it's um, aid additional. So it was a private visit. His life is no longer private. You become the president of Nigeria. You're no longer private. You are the president of the most populous black nation in the world. You cannot go on a private visit. Are you going on holiday? Then we know you're on holiday. It could just be semantics. So no. Then your point exactly yeah, is. The, the, then his media aid should not spoon feed us or pull wool over our eyes and think we're stupid. Few weeks ago, this same presidency came up with a statement, I said it on here, here that I hope this is not just playing to the gallery, that the traveling allowance of the ministers is now being managed mm. or caught. Now, and I said here that day, that it's, it's, not, it's good, but it's not good enough. It should be across board. That we should across board the legislative, the judiciary, from state to local government. Mm -hmm. We need a proper policy, not just this showman that we do. It's not going to work. Okay, so we'll go to this day now. I know you have something, but no, hold, okay. hold it on for it's this okay. day. Right. <laughs> hold it on. So, MFLA, uh, border closure, closure is creating jobs and boosting local demand. Says the reopening must be based on terms and conditions. And that story is on the front page. It will be displayed, uh, but it's continued on page nine of this day newspaper. And foreign airlines reap $700 million from ticket sales in eight months. And that's on page six, uh, displayed there on your screen. Uh, then consequential adjustment de depends on ability to pay, gov governors insist. Uh, be fair to workers, labor urges, and federal government, there can't be uniformity. Okay, we've already spoken about that. That's on the front page. Please grab a copy and then find out what's about. It's continued on page nine of this day newspaper. The only different story here is Nigeria to earn additional $1.4 billion uh, annually from amendment of the Police Service Commission Act. House considers bill today. That story is on the front page. You can see it. And then um, 
uh, it's continued on page nine. Now, there's a picture story. Uh, going for future initiative. Well, uh, you know now that the president is out of his dead out of the country for private visit, uh, which, <laughs> which um, Femi here is not happy about. But yeah, anyways, look at the crowd. Look at the people. Uh, well, <laughs> he's gone to the country. That's the reality. He's gone out well, of the country. He has said it all. Uh, so the man is not comfortable. Lawan rejects, Lawan rejects call for unicameral legislature scrapping of Senate. That's on page eight. Uh, you find that story there. Which one are we? Just one story. Okay. Let me start from you. Um, let's talk about the border closure. <laughs> yeah. It's an economic okay. issue and it has an impact on all of us. Just on Saturday, um, I walked into a shop and I wanted to buy, buy rice. rice. God I bless you. So I wanted to buy rice. I thought about it. I'd like to buy early enough because I know when it gets to. And a bag of rice I bought for 8,000 naira some weeks ago. I was buying this time for somebody. And I was buying it for 15,000 naira just two weeks afterwards. Mm. The other one I bought for. And that's you trying to buy early. It has me trying to buy early. The other one I, I bought for um, about 20,000 or, or about that is now 28,000 naira. And I am being, I was warned that I rather, I, 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 better, I, I, buy I, I, I better buy it now. Otherwise, I would be, be sorry. And when I looked at my list, I, I bought what I could anyway. But it is just to tell us what is to come. I don't, what, what I would say in respect of this border closure, we see. Um, situations like this playing out in all, uh, all scenarios of our national life. You see a government that has failed, and it takes the burden of that failure and puts it on the people. Mm. It is the responsibility of the government to adequately man and control our borders. How can I successfully take a car from a Papa Wharf and I get to lucky with it, and then the customs are chasing me all the way, causing accidents on the road and saying, no, you didn't pay adequate duty on that car. There is somebody at the wharf in Apapa who also ought to be sacked mm -hmm. as a result of the fact that adequate Absolutely. duties were not paid for that car that was taken out and driven up to Lekki. Right now, the customs has gone about locking um, all of the, the car showrooms in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's pathetic. It is, it is a sign that our government has failed us, and it is a sign that, unfortunately, they are taking the burden on that failure on us. So it is, it is a case of double jeopardy for the people of Nigeria, and it's quite unfortunate, I must say. Do you respond? Yes, I absolutely agree with him, because they put the burden on the common man. Mm -hmm. The only, on the border closure, the only uh, excuse that uh, Emefele made, which I kind of agree with, mm -hmm. is um, the neighboring countries are not, are not uh, working with Nigeria properly, because they have a part to play, mm -hmm. so that the borders can be reopened. I guess, like he said, you should have done your work, not without putting so much. But I guess we need to go through this process. I've said it before. We go through this process. I hope it gets better. Mm -hmm. All right. If you could kindly pass the nation to me, which will be the last uh, paper up for review this morning. Uh, Buhari heads for London. Yes, we've heard it. So, okay. So, Oshomale and Obaseki uh, feud worsens. That's on page eight. Supporters clash in Benin and Abuja already displayed there. Thank you very much. Now, PDP and APC clash over article suit. That's on page seven. Uh, parties fight over blackmail. And then Bayosa and Kogi 2019, the elections. PDP accuses uh, the wreck of colluding with APC. Group wants PDP, APC against hate speech. And then court knocks out AA candidates. This and more you'll find on page 10 of the Nation newspaper. Um, okay, there's Kudai with charms after his arrest. Please find out what this is about. Uh, Londad. 339 billion naira Lebanese arrested in 1.8 billion naira Lagos home and there is a picture story of him with uh, his charms maybe that's what made him to uh, succeed who knows please grab a copy and find out what this is about accomplice Monfa kept 51 banks account 60 million naira researches seized that story you recall uh, it's from last week it's on the front page again but it's continued on page seven now governors reject federal government's wage pact with labor negotiation to be based on resources union leaders threaten showdown on the front page there you find that story but it's continued again on page seven and then rivers uh, sign mou with real madrid and that's on the front page, continued again on page 8. And down here, custom bus Buhari differ on dry port bound cargoes on page 40. Very quickly, um, any thoughts on any of this? Well, uh, okay, let Dr. Okay, go first. Doctor, well, please. and Obaseki. What's father going on? <laughs> well, they don't seem to be father and son no more. No, no, they are father and son. Well, with all of this going on, what yes, do you see? Yes, uh, definitely it's interest. It's personal interest. Mm -hmm. Some one person or the other has heard on the other's personal interest, and 
I'm watching, I'm reading, I want to see how that will pan out. Mm. Because it's, a, it's almost time for Baseki to ask for the second time. What do you say? What okay, well, let me let me let go. Let me follow Doctor's line of thought about <laughs> do you want to do that? And you mm -hmm. see, um, that's the reason why due process is absolutely important. We have seen this case of governors speaking their successors. It has never worked for them. Look at the efforts Peter will be putting in bringing Obiano into power. Look, look at the extent to which Obiano messed him up when he attempted to contest mm. for the presidency. This thing doesn't work anymore. See, political power intoxicates. Absolutely. And it takes a very robust system and institution in place to be able to manage democracy. Mm -hmm. And so our politicians are playing to the gallery. They, would, they are also becoming victims of their own you know, um, um, soup. You know? So it's just a matter of time. I, I wish them well, but this political battle is interesting, and I want them to fight some more. Mm. Know? Yes. All right. Uh, that's where we'll call it a wrap. Thank you very much, Bernard, uh, for pleasure. your fierce thoughts there. And thank you also, Dr. Femi. It's good to have you both to make sense of all of this. And this is where we'll call it a wrap on this program of the press. We'll do this again. Uh, throughout the week, uh, weekdays, except from weekends, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Mama Kaukui. Have yourselves a great day.